now is a critical time to be focusing on healthy beverages. I think almost everyone is aware now that we're in the middle of an epidemic of overweight and obesity. Rates of obesity in children have tripled or quadrupled in the last 30 years, and now about two-thirds of Americans are overweight or obese. And the problem, of course, isn't just being overweight, because that leads to risks of heart disease, uh, many cancers, and diabetes. And just as sure as night follows day, uh, once we have a, an epidemic of diabetes, that leads to kidney failure, blindness, uh, more heart disease, uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, during the last several years, it's become clear that soda and other sugary beverages like fruit drinks are one of the main factors that are fueling the epidemic of obesity. Uh, we've seen, for example, that about one uh, drink of sugary beverage per day causes about a 60% increase in the risk of obesity in children. And there's a clear relationship uh, between sugary beverage consumption and overweight and weight gain uh, in adults as well. Uh, we've seen, for example, there's been about a 300 calorie per day uh, increase uh, in intake of, uh, in the American population over the last 40 years, and about half of that increase has been due to sugary beverages. So uh, reducing consumption of sugary beverages is one of the most important things that we can do to help blunt the epidemic of uh, diabetes and ob obesity. The typical soda contains a lot of sugar and therefore a lot of calories. Uh, this, for example, uh, Orange Fanta contains, it says, 110 calories if per serving. Uh, the problem is that this isn't just one serving. This 20 ounce container, if we look in the fine print above it, says it contains 2.5 servings. So that's about 275 calories, a very big chunk of our daily allowance. Now we can also put that in terms of teaspoons of sugar. This is about 17 teaspoons of sugar. And if you can think of just sort of eating 17 teaspoons of sugar, that would be disgusting. Now we often think of 100% fruit juice as being a healthy product. And it does contain a lot of nutrients that we do need, but it comes with a lot of calories. Uh, this, for example, small container of orange juice contains about 190 calories. Uh, so that's a huge, and it's all in the form of sugar. So that's another huge dose of sugar. Uh, having a small glass of orange juice, maybe about half of this amount per day, would be a good way to start the morning. But if we consume this amount once or twice a day, that can actually increase the risk of overweight and diabetes. Uh, diet beverages, of course, uh, are one possible option to drinking uh, the full sugared soda. And almost for sure, they're going to be better, but just because we know that regular full sugared soda is so harmful for weight gain and diabetes. But we really don't have long-term studies looking at the effects, say, on cancer over 30 or 40 years of consuming diet sodas on a regular basis. Uh, that information just isn't available at this time. And so I think that's one concern. There, there is some uncertainty about the long-term consequences. But also, especially for children, many of my colleagues and I are concerned about the high level of sweetness that comes in these diet sodas. And that really condition us, conditions us to expect that almost everything we should be eating or drinking would contain a high amount of sweetness. And if that's your expectation, uh, it's hard to appreciate the gentle sweetness of a fresh carrot or a fresh apple. And that can really push our uh, whole diet in a wrong direction. There are many things we can do to help reduce the consumption of sugary beverages. Uh, of course, parents, uh, families are an important part of the solution to this because they directly purchase the beverages. Uh, the, and there are a lot of alternatives. Of course, we know that just plain old water is the best beverage. Another alternative, a healthy alternative for sugary beverages is coffee or tea, as long as you don't put too much cream and sugar in them because, of course, that adds a lot of calories. But my colleagues and I, a few years ago, uh, reviewed the beverage choices, and there did seem to be something missing between the full sugary beverages and healthy water, coffee, or tea. And so we've suggested that manufacturers could provide an option in between to help people step down if they can't go cold turkey from full sugar to no sugar at all. And so 
I think there is a place for a re greatly reduced sugar beverage in our food supply. And we've come up with a level of one gram of sugar per ounce. And that would mean about uh, two to three teaspoons of sugar per an eight ounce container or serving of, uh, of a drink. And that would represent about a 70% reduction in the amount of sugar in a beverage. Again, plain old water is the best thing, but this would be a huge improvement if people can step down from a full sugary beverage. There are some important things that state and federal governments can also do to help reduce consumption of sugary beverages. And one is to provide clear information, uh, in particular, a big label on the front of the package, the front of the bottle or can, that tells how many calories are actually in that container. Uh, I and a number of colleagues believe that it would also be useful to put a warning label on the front of packages for beverage that, beverages that contain more than 50 calories per 12 ounce. And that warning label should say that this consumption of this beverage on a regular basis increases the risk of obesity and diabetes. There's very sound evidence to support that now. In addition, a government should tax sugary beverages fairly. Uh, in many places, sugary beverages are not taxed. Uh, they're treated like food, which is important for our health. But these beverages are different. They damage our health, and they deserve to be taxed, like we would tax uh, most things that we buy. Uh, and probably it would be a good idea to even put an additional excise tax on these beverages like we do for alcoholic beverages.